Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. Well, everybody, the news hit us all towards the end of Tuesday evening that Kim and Kanye are getting divorced. Now, when the news first hit, it came from Page Six, who basically said they've heard from multiple sources that she has met with Laura Wasser, who's like the biggest attorney for celebrities. And I think she may have done Kim's um, other divorce from Chris Humphreys, but I'm not 100% sure. But um, And it was like, well, it's not for sure. But then everybody else started to pick it up, including E! News. And meanwhile, Kim or Chris or Kanye, none of them made a, a statement like on their social media or anything saying this is absolutely not true. Please, just we, we're working on ourselves. I don't know how the story got out. And if it's someone, you know, if there's someone who knows how to work the media and to release stories when they want it released and have a hot, you know, person to call right away, it's Kris Jenner. So um, I believe this is happening. I'd be really shocked if it wasn't. Then the Today Show put out a tweet saying their sources are saying that they have not, that she has not, in fact, filed, which we know she hasn't because otherwise we would have the court document that she filed. That's normally how things are reported. TMZ has someone at the courthouse or they're living down there or whatever, they, and they immediately know that this person has filed for divorce. Um, that's kind of like what happened with Erica Jane. She put out, I think she filed or put out the statement the day of the election. So this, she has not filed yet. And that supposedly they're, she, they're meeting with attorneys to work out the mediation now. Of course, I'm sure they had a very detailed prenuptial agreement, which will hopefully, hopefully make this divorce easy as far as splitting up assets. Um, I believe they were probably really smart about their purchases of big properties and whatnot so that it wouldn't be as messy if they were to break up. And... Um, how do I feel about it? Well, there's been lots of hints, uh, obviously, in the last couple years with his, and I'm going to say psychotic rants, um, to saying that slavery was a choice, to showing up at TMZ, to uh, the latest one where he said he was he wanted to kill, that he had, his initial thought was to kill his daughter, meaning get an abortion for North, and it was Kim who... Um, said no, and that he has terrible guilt about that. There's just been really strange moments, obviously. But they have four kids, and two of which she gave birth to. All of their kids, all of them um, are their embryos. But after Saint, she had such a terrible pregnancy that um, the two younger kids, Chicago and Psalm, they were carried by surrogates. So my other question is, are there any more frozen embryos of Kim and Kanye's? And did she, and I'm sure she did, have some legal writings about who has the rights over those? Or did they um, destroy whatever embryos were left? Or does she have a bunch of eggs that she saved that have not been made into embryos, meaning a sperm has not greeted it. So those eggs, she could eventually have kids with someone else. I bet she does, just to be, just for insurance. But I do think she's done having kids. She turned 40 this year. She's got four kids. They're all full siblings. You know, they're all healthy. She, you know, she's just kind of getting out of that baby phase. Now she's going to be single, even if she fell in love with someone else. I kind of doubt that she'd want to have more, but she might, you know. Um, her mom, Chris, had the two, Kendall and Kylie, when she was like 39 and I think 41, you know, which was kind of older at that time now. You wouldn't blink an eye at it. So here are some strange things that has happened in the news. This is what people are saying. What would be at stake if Kanye West and Kim Kardashian were to divorce? So this expert weighed in, well, Kim got Kanye to go up there to Wyoming. So they could live separate lives and quietly get things sorted out to separate and divorce. And um, another E! News source claims that Kim knows the marriage is over and she's known for a while. Now, this whole thing with Wyoming, um, a lot of California people are buying property in Wyoming. 
Uh, Kanye did it. It's because there's a, there's no, I believe, and I might be wrong, there's no income tax. And I don't know what the property tax, but there's no income tax. So our income tax in California is very high. So if you can establish residency in another state like Wyoming, you can really save a lot of money. But in order to do that, you have to show that you truly live there at least six months out of the year. You can't just buy a house there and go spend one week at Christmas and have it count. So he has been spending so much time there. He does, you know, they do go up there and they do enjoy it. Um, but obviously we knew she wasn't loving it that much, just like she wasn't loving, you know, having a house with not one speckle of color. I don't know if you guys saw those Christmas stockings, but they looked like, um, leg casts. They were just white, fluffy with no shape, solid white stockings. And that is just so different than the kind of style that Kim grew up with and the kind of style we saw it from her as a young adult. I mean, to just act like you just suddenly don't like any color and your favorite color is multiple shades of nude, I just don't believe it. But she was so into giving Kanye this power of being like, he knows fashion, he's making me cool, what does Kanye think? And then her team and her makeup artists and her glam squads were smart enough to know to ingratiate themselves to Kanye, including her family, and I would be like, oh, what does Kanye think? Oh, Kanye has a fashion show. Oh, we're all going to wear these ripped clothes, or we're all going to wear these, you know, prison outfits and these orthopedic nurse shoes and, and just walk down and do the fashion show. And oh, thank God we have this fashion genius in our family. I mean, think how happy they are to be done with this. Okay. Another thing that was said is trouble in paradise between the two was first reported over the summer when West announced his candidacy for presidency. And during what Kardashian later implied was an episode brought on by his bipolar disorder, West brought up the possibility of divorcing his wife at a campaign event while claiming they considered aborting their child. That was what I talked about earlier. He said, even if my wife wants to divorce me after this speech, she brought North into the world even when I didn't want to. He was crying. It was kind of a beautiful moment where he was sort of honoring Kim, but again, very strange to share. Kim Kardashian and Kanye West also spent a lot of time apart. Um, Of course, they've been focused on the kids. But in a since-deleted tweet, this is when he was doing all those crazy tweets where he mentioned Larsa. Okay, which, by the way, let's just talk about Larsa for a minute. Larsa, as you know, was her best friend, Larsa Pippen. She's 46. She had four kids with the NBA great Scotty Pippen. And then they she's been single for a while. They've been friends forever. She was her go to her right hand girl, appeared on the show all the time. And then she just disappeared. And then about a month ago, she did a podcast And just shared the shit and basically said she couldn't take Kanye calling her anymore in the middle of the night, you know, with all of his problems. And she tried to be nice to Kanye, but she just couldn't take it anymore. And then all of a sudden, you know, she just wasn't hearing from Kim anymore. She said a lot more in that interview. And um, but I was like, wow, well, if she, you know, she certainly buried the hatchet now. Like this, they put the nail in the coffin by doing this interview. But it was clear that they weren't friends anymore. Kim did not invite Larsa on the, you know, $1 million private plane flight to the island for her 40th. And it was right after that that Larsa decided to do this interview. Since then, Larsa has been seen with a married man. Um, a really young guy, just not great press for Larsa. And I was thinking, oh, Kim's probably glad that, you know, she doesn't doesn't have to try to defend her best friend's behavior. But my question is, did Larsa wake up this morning or last night when the news hit and been like, shit, if I just kept my mouth shut, if I just laid low, this would have been a great time to reach out to my girl, Kim, and be like, I'm here for you. I've been there the whole time. Obviously, I know that they were having problems. And I kept my mouth shut. I stood by you. When are you ready to go, you know, walk around, when, you know, and have some fun together? But that's over with now. I mean, now she's definitely not going to want anything to do with Larsa. And Larsa's like, ah, shit, you know. 
I also wonder what is what did Black China wake up to today? What is what is she thinking? What is Amber Rose thinking? Who was um, Kanye's main squeeze before? And they've had their Twitter wars and fights publicly. Um, and then also uh, Taylor Swift. She's got to be like, mm hmm. OK, so. In this, in a sense deleted tweet, the power rapper also claimed that he'd been trying to divorce, meaning Kanye has been trying to divorce Kardashian ever since she attended a prison reform event with Meek Mill in 2008 because he didn't like Meek. Also in the same rant, he shaded Kardashian's past Playboy spread and claimed that the reality star's mother, Kris Jenner, was no longer allowed to see his children. That was like that crazy, those crazy rant days of just like you just couldn't believe all the things he was saying, bringing up Larsa Pippen, bringing up Kris Jenner. Um, just very, very strange. So I think we all know that he has some type of men mental illness. I'm not going to diagnose it. And we saw when she went to him, there was a photo of her hysterically crying like she was pleading with him. I don't know that he's ever been on medication. Then another side of her is like, we know that he has this, but this is his genius. And then because he, you know, has this this mental disorder, it also adds to the genius of his creativity. And we don't want to stifle it with any kind of, um, you know, prescription medication. But I think there isn't a person on earth that isn't going to, I don't think anyone's going to shame her or blame her for wanting out of this roller coaster nightmare and also just the control. Like clearly they act like they're such a unit and that they just like, you know, no photos or, you know, nothing hanging in their place. Just everything is muted. I mean, it looks like an insane asylum. It looks like what an old insane asylum looked like. All white walls, you know, clean, no, no color, nothing. And even when North was born, she wasn't allowed she couldn't dress her in anything pink, purple, green, nothing. It had to be all black, tan, nude, or white. And now that the North and the other kids, the older kids, they wear what they want, as expected. And a lot of people think that Kim's Christmas outfit, in which she did not share Christmas with her. Now, they didn't have their big Christmas Eve party, but they had, you know, they got together as a family and they took a bunch of pictures and she wore a very weird outfit. It was like a corset, like like the Incredible Hulk, but for a woman. And it had these, you know, um, abs studded, but, you know, her waist looked small. And then like a weird green velvet, like just tied, like something you put over a bathing suit. Basically, it looked like she was wearing a one-piece bathing suit if she had really good abs. And then she took like a towel and just wrapped it around her body. And so I don't know if that wasn't a great outfit. So... I don't think he had a part of it, and I can't, I can't say I loved it. Um, but this was the height of her wearing weird shit. If you're watching this on my YouTube, please go to it, subscribe, have fun, tell a friend, leave a comment. And it's, um, it's the biker shorts. It's a big puffy jacket on a hot summer day in the San Fernando Valley. Then she has the these boots that I like a fitted high thigh boot. I don't like it when it's all chunky, like you're just wearing like, I don't know, like like sweatpants that were cut off at the thigh or something. Just weird, you know? And, and then there was the weird period where she, she was wearing blonde hair and that was him wanting, loving the blonde hair. He loves blondes. She was also friends with Joyce, the makeup artist, who she's not friends with anymore, who was very blonde. I don't know. I think there was a lot that went on they had their big, beautiful wedding. Um, it is sad when you think about some of the stuff I really loved, like the um, Lana Del Rey song from The Great Gatsby with Leonardo DiCaprio. And that was the song that they got engaged to. He actually had her come out to the wedding and sing that song. I listen to it often and think of it as the Kim and Kanye song. It is really sad. Um, it's always sad when someone breaks up. But... Um, I I didn't know when it was going to happen. I knew it would happen. I just didn't know when. And I think it's interesting that she got all four kids with the same father, much like Courtney. Um, there's a lot of rumors that uh, Chloe is pregnant with Tristan's baby, her second baby. I don't know if that's true. 
But I think that they're they're smart enough to know like, hey, I want to have kids. I don't want to deal with a bunch of bullshit. Let me see what I can do. I think she did really love him. I think there was a lot of love there, a lot of joy, a lot of happiness, a lot of excitement, a lot of power coupleness. But the world has changed so much. And with his association with Trump and then not with Trump and then everything she's doing in her new, you know, venture to become a lawyer, a lot of people started to say, and this was kind of fun last night, rumors that not that she's with this guy, but it's who people would like to see her with. And that is Van Jones. And he is an author. He is an attorney. He's run up many charities. He was an advisor to um, Obama administration. He's a CNN reporter. And he has met and worked with Kim on criminal justice. And he's 54. He's divorced. He has a couple kids, two kids. I don't know how old they are, but they look like they're still like elementary age. And this is very exciting if this was to happen. And when I first saw the rumor yesterday on the internet, I was like, wait, is there any, you know, thing to actually put them together in a romantic light? And there wasn't. But I think everyone's rooting for this because he's good looking. And now she's she went from an, an you know an NBA player. Well, her first husband was in music when she was eighteen. Then she had the NBA player Chris Humphreys. Then she stepped it up and went for Kanye West, which was an exciting thing for the two of them with music and fashion and Paris and everything they had together. Then that went off the rails. Then she became an attorney, and now she could be dating an attorney. And not just any attorney, a respected guy, a good-looking guy, um, an age-appropriate guy. I mean, he's a little older than her, but not 14 years I don't think is huge. Um, Educated. Her dad was an attorney. She's becoming an attorney. Together, you know, moving into the new year and the new administration, they can do their their stuff together and it not be problematic, you know, to anybody else. They'll... I just think it's streamlining. It's she can wear her outfits again. We can see her in like hot dresses, but maybe like a little more conservative. I mean, she it's just um, I don't know that they would ever get married, but it would be fun to see this coupling. Okay, so now the question is, if this is true, if they were to date, how do you feel if you are Van Jones's ex-wife? She is an attractive white woman. Their kids in the photos I saw are adorable. So I think the kids would all get along with all the cousins. And, um, the you know, the, I, I'm not, there's no way like she broke up this marriage or thing. They've been divorced for a while. Okay, so now you're the divorced ex-wife of this guy. I don't know why they got divorced. How do you deal with that? Well, I tell you how you deal with it because I'm assuming she's a juicy scooper and listening. And if this happens... You embrace it. Let me tell you, they can. They are so nice and welcoming. You want this Kardashian family on your side. Your kids, you don't know what your kids might aspire to be when they're older. They may not want to be lawyers or whatever you do. They might want to have a makeup line. They might want to collaborate with uh, Kendall or Kylie or Kim. And how great would that be? So you don't stand in the way. You don't be a problem. You just are the biggest delight that you can be as, um, you know, as the ex-wife whose kids are going to go visit them sometimes and go on a jet sometimes and do whatever. That is my advice. Okay, but I love it. I think this is a really cool pairing if it was to happen. So we'll see. Now, the other crazy rumor that's going around is, and it's completely unfounded, but it started with someone saying, I know a lawyer who talked to Kim, and Kim said the reason she's divorcing Kanye is because he has been having a romantic affair with a beauty social influencer guru, who, and that guru is male. So some people, whoever got this info, then put it together so that everyone now is putting two and two together. 
they think that Kanye is having a romantic relationship with Jeffree Star. We've talked about Jeffree Star. Very, very successful. Has his own makeup line. He is tattooed from the neck down. Wears a lot of makeup. Has these long nails that are, like, very scary. Pink Lamborghinis. Lives in Hidden Hills within the gates of the Kardashians. And also has bought a property in Wyoming. Um, then there was some other rumor that there was some photo of uh, Jeffree Star that Jeffree Star posted, like where he took a photo of himself or um, maybe there were glass, his glasses and someone said within the reflection of the glasses looked to be a guy that was similar in appearance to Kanye. I mean, I don't know. But you know what? It made yesterday fun. It's making this Juicy Scoop fun. Who knows? You know, there's always been rumors, um, though there's never been anything in any kind of factual, uh, any kind of real facts that Kanye has been anything but a guy attracted to cis females. So, um, but Jeffree Star has had several boyfriends um, that were, I think, where they were not gay men until they got with Jeffree Star. And Jeffree Star wears makeup and everything, but, you know, in no way, like, dresses like a woman, okay, or anything like that. So it's just very juicy. And I don't think just because two people are living in Wyoming, they're fucking, okay? Like I said, a lot of people live in Wyoming. A lot of international people have moved to Wyoming, I don't know how Wyoming people feel about all of this, but it's uh, a lot of California people are there and a lot of stars live in Hidden Hills and they're not boning either. So it just kind of was an insane story. Now, what do I think is going to happen in this divorce? Well, there's real, I think definitely Kim is going to have the upper hand. Um, you know, if he hadn't shown these weird psychotic breaks from the moment he grabbed the award from Taylor Swift on. There's been so many proving from the Twitter rants and everything that 99% of the people will agree that mentally he has episodes. So obviously that's very easy to prove. And she is, you know, is the mother and has been a hands-on mom. So I think what will happen is they, the kids will see their father, and she will be very accommodating to having them see their father, which is great because she has the funds to do it. She has the private jets. She can send them with four nannies and two bodyguards. But I'm pretty sure whatever she does, and she should, it will be supervised visits. I do not think he's ever going to have just him and the kids alone for a weekend with no help. Um which is really good that they can afford that because I know there's so many um, people going through separation where they really do fear that their ex, um, you know, is unstable. And it's very terrifying when a judge says, I don't care. That's their weekend. You better give the kids to him or you're going to be in contempt of court. And there's an enormous amount of stories where um, the parent has been forced to give their kid to the other custodial parent and it is ended in tragedy and i'm not saying that's going to happen here but it she does she won't even have to worry about it for a half a second because they have the funds to have the help and everything so that's what i think will happen now will the family be as embracing to the exes as they have been with lamar with scott disick um who else was there anybody else that they like always had come around. I guess those are the two main. Tristan, you're right. Tristan, even when Tristan was on the outs, very welcoming. You are the, so um, I think they will, but I don't know Kanye's personality. I don't know if they're, if his personality won't be as like, oh, thank you so much for still letting me come around because he is, you know, a huge star in, in the world and in his own mind. So I don't know that he will want to still come around and hang out with the Kardashians. Once again, it's sad. Kris Jenner was his only mom. Scott Disick's mom has passed, and so did Lamar's mom. And so I think that, you know, like 
Chris was really um, very motherly to these guys and formed a really great mother-son relationship with them. And so then when the daughters broke up, you'd see it in the show where they're like, oh, my God, why is mom talking to Lamar still or something? I think there was an episode about that. And um, and I think it's it's hard because she cares about these kids, these guys, and always wants to be, you know, have everybody, like, get along and keep it peaceful but obviously her alliance is to her daughter and and she wants her daughter to live her best life. And there is just this great feeling of knowing like Kim can be free to do whatever she wants and she doesn't have to worry about his feelings. I mean, I, I can't imagine what a codependent relationship this has been. It's taken me a while to figure out what codependency means. I was always so confused. But if you look at this, you could tell that she was always like, how is Kanye coming off? Oh, Kanye knows what I should be wearing. And then there was this kind of great moment when she was getting ready for the Met. And she and it, the person that did her outfit, it was supposed to be her like kind of coming out of a pool. So it was a super tight, tiny, tiny outfit sucked in at her tiny waist. And it had like jewels to look like droplets of water. And it was very revealing. And then, you know, she had like this wet, sexy hair. And on the show, she's getting ready in it. And Kanye comes in and he's like, you shouldn't be wearing that. You're the mother of uh, four kids. You're my wife. Why are you wearing such a sexy thing? And she's she gets pissed. And she's like, what? You're, you're stepping in here the night before I'm going to wear this, which is a huge deal. And um, I can't just like change. I don't have another outfit. And she's like, I understand that you're on your religious spiritual journey and I appreciate that, but you can't come in in the final hour and then make me feel badly that I'm wearing this outfit, which in the past you would have been totally down for. Like these, this is the kind of thing that you would have been into. Now suddenly you're saying it's like too sexy. And I loved that they showed that moment. I thought it was really interesting and telling. I thought it showed them being like a real couple, but now in light that they are, in fact, most likely breaking up, it also tells that she is, was getting to a point where she's like, enough. I live in a cream house. Also, oh, my God, when I would hear about them doing their house, okay, anybody that's lived through a remodel with a spouse, it's a nightmare. Even if you're living in a small house and you're just going to, like, redo a bathroom it's very hard to be on the same page with your spouse. Something always goes wrong. It always costs more. You know, you get in, you, it's very rare that you don't get in a fight with your spouse over something. Now, so many things that they did in building this house, redoing this house in Hidden Hills, they would like redo this whole thing. And then he'd walk in and be like, that's not the shade of white I wanted on the marble. Take it out. And they'd have to take it out. And she just had to keep putting up with this. Like, how annoying is this? I, wh what wife wouldn't just be like, it's freaking fine, Kanye. I want to move into my house. Like, I'm sick of being displaced. I know that we have 25 billion people working for us, but it's still annoying. Like, I want to be settled. And that would happen all the time. And even when you look back at the old episodes, they had to live at Chris's house, um, Chris Jenner's house, while they were building their house. And, you know, it was funny, but Chris couldn't stand it. And, like... That I don't care how rich you are, being displaced and going through a remodel is is not fun, and it's a nightmare, and you don't feel settled, and it's stressful, and I don't care how rich you are either, it's expensive, especially when you you like something and your spouse goes, I don't care that it's two million dollars, rip it out, and it's both of their money, so I think she's just ready to be free and get to experience what she wants and throw up colors and things that she likes. Oh my God. So Jeffree Star just posted. He's a genius. Um, looking pretty cute with rainbow hair and a fluffy pink uh, bathrobe and just wrote, I'm ready for Sunday service. So, I mean, I love it. I think this is fun. Again, I don't believe that that rumor is true, but I'm, it's fun to explore it. Okay. Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, you guys. They are on vacation, and Garcelle posted a photo of all of them. They look to be in some type of woody area, all wearing sweats and looking cute. And Erica Jane is there with just some sunglasses, and I'm zoomed in here on the YouTube screen. And 
Um, definitely not having the glam squad in tow. We know because of her legal issues, she certainly can't have that, nor could she afford it at this point. Um, now she is beautiful with very little makeup and I'm sure she could manage to do her own makeup, but she's smart enough to wear about the biggest sunglasses you've ever seen. You know, with no filter and no glam, she definitely does not look the way she's looked in past seasons. Now in big, big, Tom and Erica Girardi news. Yesterday was their uh, court date to talk about bankruptcy. And what happened was um, the judge said, I'm appointing a government trustee. First of all, Tom and Erica did not show up, which you don't have to. You can have your representative show up, but they didn't show up because she's obviously filming this thing um, too. And basically what they said is, we're going into bankruptcy and this government trustee will be the one that divvies up whatever property and whatever items they find to pay back all the people who are owed money. They also said that this is giving them the right to sue anybody that may have received stolen money, meaning the money that Tom Girardi used for himself, which he did not hand over to the victims of these big lawsuits Whoever got that money could be sued. Well, one of the people that have certainly gotten that money looks to be Erica Jane. So this is a really bad news for Erica Jane. Along with figuring out all of these um, assets, anything can be used to find it. That means the Lamborghini that we've seen her drive, the multiple cars we've seen them drive on the show, the latex outfits, the... Um, God, I'm just remembering things. There's the big Jaguar Cartier ring that I think was worth $750,000. Purses, clothes, handbags, all of that, which is, you know, we saw that she was trying to sell her clothes two weeks ago. And the judge said, absolutely not. You can't sell anything on your private website or Poshmark or whatever. So this is going to make the season really juicy and um Shannon, my sister and I, we did, we went a deep dive, got her legal opinion on it. And that is on Patreon this Saturday on Juicy Crimes Patreon. So you go to heathermcdonald.net, click on Patreon, check it out if you have not already joined. So not good for her. The Bachelor, you guys. So I watched The Bachelor. Now on Tuesday, I was very intrigued by the photos I saw of our Bachelor, Matt, with Tyler. And they looked very chummy and very cute. But um, I don't think they're a couple. I know there's a lot of people in this world, myself included, that would love to see them as a couple. I don't know. But other people beg to differ. From what I saw on the show, on the two-hour premiere, I want to say they have never chosen a better bachelor, a better person that you'd actually want to marry and hang out with then this guy, Matt. And it was really genius because he was never on any of the seasons. Now, he did mention that he was going to do it, but prior to him doing it and knowing Tyler, somehow Tyler mentioned it and they, they were like, we want to find a diverse bachelor. And oh my God, Tyler has a friend. This guy is tall, gorgeous, his mom is totally cute and normal. So his background is his dad was black. His mom was white. They divorced very young. He has a younger brother. I think he's younger, but they're close in age. And, you know, he played sports. The, they, you, the mom raised them to be Christian boys. He's only 28 or 29. He, I, they showed him wearing football gear. I don't know if he played in college. He played in college, okay, but I don't think he played professionally. He's very tall and fit, okay? Lots of him taking a shower, lots of him doing a sit-up, and he's got a great personality. Like I said, the mom is nice and normal, which was not the case with Peter the pilot. That mom, Barb, was great TV, but a very overbearing um, mom. But again, we didn't notice, we didn't really realize what she was like. Um, until later on, but this chick is like cool. She's got cool gray hair and kind of hip and like, she does like a couple purple pink stripes. And she's just like a fun chick. And she, he has one meeting with her and I'm like, oh my God, I love her. 
So they're doing it in like this big resort out in, is it Pennsylvania? I don't know. But there's they can do other things. They can zip line there. They can go on, what is it? Philad- maybe it's Philadelphia. It's gorgeous. It's like, it's. It, I mean, all I do, all I hope is that the cameramen and women and producers that had to work on the La Quinta Resort and Spa, worst season ever in in Palm Springs, okay, in 120 degrees heat. I don't know when they filmed their dates. I mean, it must have My sister was like, I cannot believe people filmed there because she lives there. They must have had to either film at like 6 a.m. or oh, everything else at night. But they did do day stuff. And there's, it must have been at 6 a.m. because it was unbearable. I'm praying that they kept those people and those people could come here because this looks beautiful. It looks to be done like in the summer or the fall. And so they can go zip lining. They can go on ATVs. It's like, you know, there's a breeze. It's just nice. So... um. The girls are very attractive and they're very tiny. And we know that the camera adds, you know, some weight on them. Their bodies are really good, really small, really tiny. Now, I love that the cast is so diverse. There's this gorgeous Ethiopian girl. I mean, it might be the the prettiest of girls I've ever seen. Um, very mixed, Asian, Latina, um, you know, black girls, white girls, mixed girls, a uh, lot of style, good dresses. A lot of them wore, wore very high platform shoes, which are kind of out of style right now, but he's so tall. And of course, they all knew who they were going to see. So a lot of them said that they were like, I was never going to do that. I was on the fence about doing this show. But once I heard it was you, someone that had never done this show before, he works in commercial real estate. He lives in New York. And when he's not selling commercial real estate, which is just a sexy job. I don't know how sex successful he is. But after this, he will be successful because people will want to give him business just because they fell in love with him on the show. He helps kids like YMCA, like legit helps little kids and is into children. He gets there and he talks to Chris Harrison. And he's like, can I talk to you for a minute? And uh, he goes, look, I am half white, half black. And I'm really excited to meet all these different women. And I don't see race. It's about the heart, not about the color of the the person. But I am nervous about who I end up with because I don't want an entire race of people to be mad at me if I don't choose, you know, who they want me to fall in love with. So I thought that was like really interesting. I love that it's like being open and talked about. It makes it, it makes it an extra layer of coolness and not just like, people being annoying. So I am on board with this season. I love it. They did it one stunt thing that I hate. There is this girl that's like, I'm Queen Victoria. And she has a, she has this crown on her head. And she is, let me see if I can spot her in this thing. She's really the most unattractive one. I don't even see her here in the photo that we have. Interesting. She, I swear to God, they just like hired a girl they thought was funny. Because, of course, he keeps her. But she shows up in this dress. She has an okay body. She's probably one of the bigger girls, though she's thin. And she has a crown on her head. And by the end of the night, which we know it takes all night and they're able to drink, I mean, she has no lipstick on. Her face is greasy. She wasn't that cute to start. And she really doesn't look good now compared to these other girls. And she's like, I'm Queen Victoria. I'm Queen There's that girl. And then there's another girl that brings a vibrator with her gives him the vibrator and was like, I hope to pass this off to you. I've had to use this during the quarantine. Then she's interrupting people, tapping people with the vibrator. The joke got a little old. Those two girls who are like the comedic breaks are not going to stick around. They're just not that interesting. But um, there, but there are other girls that are kind of fun. And then they show in the season, the most dramatic season yet, and I think it is, that like halfway through, they bring in like five other really like hot vixen girls that get to join. And the, of course, they're furious because, I mean, not only is he hot, but he's not a used piece of meat like all these other bachelor guys. He's fresh. Oh, and he starts out the rose of the evening with a prayer and he's totally eloquent. So like if he doesn't look, obviously he'll have a podcast when this is over with. Watch out, Nick Vial. Um, but after he does his podcast, he might be a preacher because he comes and he's like, I just want to start with a prayer. 
Dear Heavenly Father, let us all be blessed by your wisdom and your guidance during this time that we have self-respect and love for ourselves and each other. And, you know, something, it was amazing. A couple girls are crying. Like the fact he's like, yeah, that's where I've gotten through everything is through Jesus Christ. And so he's really, really a catch. So people are going to go crazy. Two girls wore the same dress and it's similar to what I'm wearing here in my podcast headshot. So I just um, we put this little cute photo together because I felt like I should have been part of the cast. I'm excited for it. I really am. Oh, but what I was going to say about diversity. When and okay, in the in the 25 seasons, um, we haven't had a lot of diversity as far as different ethnicities. But we also haven't had any diversity as far as different shapes and sizes of people. Everyone has been really fit and really thin. I only remember one bachelorette possibly being like a size eight named Meredith and one bachelor named Bachelor Bob who came on as a contestant and was a kind of had like a little of a chunky face, but his body really was not that big. Then he became the bachelor and they got him all thin and fit. So by the time he was the bachelor, he was not at all remotely overweight. Now, I just wonder, are we ever going to see people that contestants that are not a size two. And what do you think of that? But, you know, I don't know. We'll see. I'm, I think that's going to be the next season. That's my prediction. Hear me out. Now, this girl, she's really cute and she is deaf. She has a hearing aid, but she all really cannot hear and she reads lips very well. She got the first rose and he made out with her and he was very attracted to her right off the bat. And so she's a front runner. And I thought that was kind of sexy. Okay, you guys, Megan and Harry, Megan and Harry, as you know, they're living in California. They have a son and they started a podcast. I mean, girl, could you stop copying my life? It's just, it's actually embarrassing. She also has a crazy sister. Again, Megan, can you stop copying my life. I've talked about Samantha, her sister. Well, the tell all book is coming out. Apparently it's coming out. It's been, um, published. It's being published by Barnes and Noble and it's coming out, uh, January 17th. And it is called diary of the princess pushy princess pushy's sister part one. And it talks about the crossroads that she goes through, Samantha, between the media and everything else. And she's going to really uh, share some things people didn't know about the family. I don't know what else there is to find out about this family that anyone would care about. We know everything. We know the parents were divorced. We know um, that she's from the father's first marriage. We know that they really didn't hang out that much. Because she was 18 when Megan was born. We know that she wasn't invited to the wedding. We should know she's bitter. I don't know. But um, I'm here for it. Oh, another thing about her that I thought was interesting is with um, is with they, she was one of those, another one of those people that said, I didn't even know. I really didn't know much about Harry or the royal family. I grew up in the States. You know, what do I know about, you know, Harry and William and, well, you know, there's lots of stories about her totally being into Princess Diana. And let me just tell you something, you guys. When I was growing up, which she's a little, she's younger than I am, but the magazines always talked about the royals. We always knew about Princess Diana. We always knew about the sons. We always knew about who they were dating. It was everywhere. It's always being reported on all the tabloid shows, all the magazines. People know who they are in America. And she tried to say like she didn't really know about him and that her question was, um, tell me about his personalities. Is he a nice person? Um, but apparently, you know, she was obsessed with Diana and everything. So I think that's kind of juicy. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't I, I think they're still in love and um, and I think she is a great wife to him. And I, I think. I think he's going to have a great life that he did leave that weirdness. I really do. I mean, they have a, they have all these great opportunities coming up because of her. 
and people think it's terrible that she took him away from the family. But God, watch the crown. It's not like they were a great family to begin with. All right. So moving on. It is Hilaria's birthday, everybody. Happy birthday, Hillary, Hilaria, Baldwin. It's her birthday. Um, someone mentioned that they went through her Instagram and they think that she has removed a lot of videos where she sounds Spanish. So someone do a deep dive on that. Let me know. Um, another person wrote me, they had some inside scoop that the story is, and I've heard the story a few other places being a rumor that she, the restaurant they met at, um, people knew that he was totally infatuated with his co-star of 30 Rock, Selma Hayek, and that he was really into dating a woman that was Spanish and somebody knew him and said, Hillary, go to this restaurant. Or she said, okay, I'd like to meet him and just play up the Spanish thing. He's like super into that. So what if, and this is just my mind going, what if she could speak perfect Spanish and she did enjoy Spanish stuff and Latin dancing and whatnot? Oh, and other people say that Spanish is not Latin. So I apologize if I say that, but she was doing Latin ballroom dancing. Okay. That's what she's doing in America. And... What if um, she, you know, when she met him, she was speaking the perfect Spanish and he just was like, I love it. Speak to me like that. Speak to me that. And she just kind of kept going for it and kept doing it. And then like just realized that he was that much more affectionate and into her. And then it just that's what it was. And she just sort of played into this and. And I think he did not want to be that guy that just had the basic white wife from Boston. I think it made him interesting. I think it made him seem, I don't know. Um, I think people liked their couplehood being that she was from Spanish, from Spain or believing that. But from what I heard, it was a known thing in New York that her that her accent was fake, that this was something that they both did and played up and used to their own advantage. He is a weird dude. He's had numerous outbursts with people. He's got in trouble with the law. He's gotten in fights with people. Um, he's used, you know, horrible language that then he denied. He said, oh, I called someone a big fat head when in fact the person said, no, you called me the F word, uh, you know, drug choice slang for being gay. And you know, so I really kind of think they deserve each other. But I feel like maybe she's the victim. Like maybe she, he really pushed her into doing this. But her Instagram will show you she was also really thirsty. And oh, and then they also had this lawsuit thing happen where in her yoga studio, I think she owned a yoga studio, someone was doing some yoga move and their leg hit the glass and the glass broke and and severely injured this person. And the, they, the reason they got in trouble for that is that in this, when you're having a yoga studio or whatever, any kind of exercise, you're supposed to have the windows be non-breakable glass. And with that lawsuit, there was a lot of ugliness that went on um, in Alec Baldwin going after these, the people that were suing. So I don't know. Again, will we see him, you know, again, doing anything on SNL or making fun of himself? Who knows? But they've gone away and they're probably really happy about the other news that happened with Kim and Kanye. <clears throat> Danny Masterson, you guys, uh, when I talked about this on Tuesday, I was corrected. The, this, this arbitration that's happening in Scientology about the accusations made about um, sexual assault that he has committed with uh, several people um, does not affect the criminal charges. So he is not off the hook with the criminal charges. But the way I understand it is, so the, so this suit was initially filed in August 2019 by Chrissy Carnell Bixler and her husband, Cedric Bixler, and Marie Babette Riles and two Jane Doe's. The husband is involved because it says it claims that the agents working for Scientology stalked and intimidated them after they reportedly after they reported the assault allegations against him to the police. So this judge, Stephen Kleinfeld, ruled in L.A. County 
this past Wednesday that the civil complaints must be resolved through religious arbitration due to the existing arbitration agreement among the involved parties. So when you join um, Scientology, you sign all of these papers. And I talked to Stephen uh, Mango, who's been on my show before, who left Scientology but was a big part of the church for a while. And he said that when you join the church, almost like the first day, you sign all these papers that say that you will never go um, any problem you have. You will go to arbitration with Scientology. You will not go to the actual courts. He even signed something that said um, giving Scientology the ability to release him from like a psych ward, like this is my next to kin or whatever, that they could take me out of here. Um, Not next to kin, that's different. But like take, you know, I could be released to Scientology. That's what I would choose. I'm signing it before they could bring the papers. So if he was in a psych ward, they could bring the papers and take him and remove him from um, and do their own psychology work to help his mental health. So that I just can't imagine. I mean, that is terrible. So they have to go back to, and imagine you're going to the Scientology Center. All these people that are there are Scientologists. They've all been trained to be on behalf of the Scientology. So how are you going to at all win in this? So according to what he was saying, they have to do this, go through this process, and then they can say, we feel like this wasn't fair and then try to take it to the regular LA courts. But they have to go through this exercise first, which is terrible because there was stalking and harassment according to their claims. And one guy um, did the same thing and was like, had to go through arbitration for millions of dollars that, that he felt they got him out of, um, that they pushed him to give to Scientology. And they were like, okay, the Scientology board is like, okay, we hear you. And you're saying that we bullied you out of giving us a million dollars and we hear you and we'll give you 5,000. So there's been cases like that, but they still have to go through it, which is insane because it's like you're going back to, you know, your perpetrators almost. But the criminal, um, this will not affect the criminal, but it's just really crazy. All right, let's a couple more things. Okay, you guys, you remember when I had Rachel Uchitel on my show? She is the famous mistress of Tiger Woods. And it was a really juicy interview, and I really got into talking to her. But many of the things that you guys came back with was, wow, after her husband died in 9-11, her fiancé, then she married another guy. After that marriage didn't work out, she... um got involved with Tiger Woods while he was married. Um, And then she got married and had a daughter and then was single again. And since then, she had some other people that she dated that were married um, and claimed, I didn't know they were married and I won't ever date someone who's married again. So this is pretty juicy. Rachel, according to Daily Mail, Rachel was caught on camera kissing a married lawyer on a romantic getaway Days before, he dumped his wife and kids and closed a bank account and moved to Palm Beach to be with her. So this guy married this woman named Robin in 2014. She had three kids. And she and that woman, Robin, is talking to Daily Mail and said that he um, started to act a little strange around Thanksgiving And then he shipped his Porsche to Florida days before his departure, then told his wife that, you know, oh, oh, he told his wife that it was being repaired. Then she claimed that she only realized he was leaving her on December 19th when he boarded a red eye flight to Florida and allegedly closed their family bank account. She said it was such a huge betrayal. The kids are devastated. He canceled the bank account and left town. I don't know what we're going to do. Both the guy bats and Rachel denied that they were even dating, but they are photographed kissing passion passionately. And he's 47 and he's okay. Looking. Oh, he's walking her dog. Mm, He's walking, walking Rachel's dog. And, um, 
they believe that they um, met through Instagram or the internet. And he now lives in a rented three-bedroom townhome across the street from Rachel's apartment block. Although the two spend most of their time together, they have been photographed repeatedly by the Daily Mail while enjoying their new life. And, um, oh, so on Sunday, Rachel, who used to own a boutique, um, was seen getting out of his Porsche Cayenne, the one that I guess he sent to Florida saying it was being fixed. And she's appearing in the documentary, the HBO documentary, January 10th. So it airs on January 10th. So that's pretty juicy. And on the 17th is the episode where she discusses her affair with the golfer, which you couldn't tell on my show. And um, so I'm very excited to watch that. But anyway, this is really too bad for that woman. It seems like she was really blindsided. And, um, you know, again, it's a married it's a married guy. Now, what she was told, who knows? I'm sure when she met him, he probably said, you know, oh, my God, no, I've been we've been separated or I'm getting divorced or I will get divorced. And the truth is, who knows how much interaction they really had before he actually left her. But still, technically, he was married, so it doesn't look great. Um, but who knows? I mean, she is gorgeous and she has some ability to get guys. I don't. It's it's kind of amazing. Okay, Real Housewives of Dallas started, you guys, and I watched it. And this is the new girl. She's an anesthesiologist. She's beautiful Asian woman. She's two little girls. So again, we we got some diversity going, and she's kind of funny because she sort of speaks like, "Oh my God, I don't even know what I want to do tomorrow," but she's an anesthesiologist. Much like Cameron, who talks like, so my dog passed away, and I think that it's Court's fault because he forgot to feed her the medicine. But I got a new dog that's going to puppy boot camp. This is Court, her husband. Anyway, this was kind of interesting, okay? You don't need to watch the show for this. But she gets this dog, and it's like a little Pomeranian type of dog. It went away to puppy boot camp for Maybe I misunderstood, but six months. Doesn't that seem kind of long? Then the hot guy comes, and he's really hot. He's, like, completely tattooed sleeves. Oh, he has a wedding ring on. Well, that's too bad. Anyway, he's married, and but he's, like, got a clean-cut look, but he's tatted up. And she, the dog comes, and she's like, oh, my God, fancy. You're so wood, 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 wood. And he's like, that has to stop. The dog trainer goes, that has to stop. And Court, her husband, is like, yeah, this isn't every day is not sorority rush for the dog. I thought that was kind of funny. And she's like, can I wear this? Can I put the dog in this baby Bijou? And he's like, no. And he goes, and what I really hate is a doggy stroller. And she goes, oh, I have one of those. He's like, yeah, you're never going to do that. The dog needs to um, use its legs. And you know when I see someone with a doggy stroller, I say, I'm sorry. What happened to your dog's legs? Now, here's the thing. I don't have a doggy stroller. My dog's a normal size. But um, I think people with doggy strollers, it's because their dogs do have, their legs are like this big. They're so little. And they want to, like, get around town. And they don't want to carry the dog. But the dog will stop at everything. And, well, anyway, this guy's hardcore. He's like the Navy SEAL of dogs. This dog has a full schedule that it wakes up. It has to pee. It sleeps in a crate. Can't sleep on your bed. Then it has to go on their treadmill for 30 minutes, which you have to, like, hold the leash next to them. Then it has supervised playtime. Then it has a small meal. Then it rests. Then um, it goes for a walk. It has two walks after that. I mean, it's just like, but I'm kind of like, what's the fun of having a dog if you can't, like, baby dog talk it? And you can't have it sleep on your bed. And you can't carry it around like a baby. And you can't get excited and go, who's a good girl? Who's a girl? What's the point? But anyway, he was hot. Now, the only other juicy thing that happened in the story is between um, Brandy and the new girl. Because Brandy, um, I believe, this the rumor is that when Leanne Locken got dropped for calling the other girl a Mexican in a derogatory tone, that some of her fans or camp found a Instagram video, Insta story. I don't know how they found it. 
from three years ago that Brandy posted. And Brandy says, people say I have really tiny eyes. So tiny. And then she makes them tinier. And she says she does like an Asian accent. And she puts her fingers to like squint her eyes more. So that was got, you know, people obviously very upset. And she goes on the show and they're filming. And she's like, I was suicidal. I had to go to a rehab, a mental rehab place. I wanted to die. I felt so badly. I didn't know how to deal with it. And so right off the bat, they, when the first scene that we see of this doctor who came from um, China and she's very pretty and smart and she's Deandra's friend. Deandra surprisingly is like, okay, so you know about Brandy, right? And she's like, yeah. And she's like, I just, she's a really good girl. I don't think she meant that. Um, it's like they're really all kind of like, um, it's weird because without Leanne, they all really have each other's backs. They're all really nice to each other. All of them have seemed to be really getting along. So really the only conflict is, is this going to be weird between the new girl and Brandy? Brandy profusely cries and apologizes as to the group in which this woman is there, the doctor, and then the doctor goes and tells her why it's so hurtful. It was pretty, I thought it was pretty interesting to watch. And, um, but, you know, who knows for the rest of the season. Okay, last thing I'm going to say about Below Deck, which was not that fun. No one's like, I don't really care about, I've told this, I don't care who's boning, you know, and how many times they take out the slide and like clean the floors. I just like, watching what these people eat and who the fan who the guests are okay these people they're probably like mid to late 50s came on the boat and got really wasted and this one girl got so drunk that she's like sitting at dinner with captain lee and she is just going oh my god like almost like she's like asleep like half sleeping like she's saying things that don't even make sense so then after dinner she jumps in the water and Captain Lee is like, get the hell out. You're drunker than a four-wooded pecker with a ball on its head. I don't know, like all those weird expressions. And um, and he says, now this is, you know, to be continued. But he says, um, your charter's over. Get back in the boat. We're turning around and we're dropping you off at port. Now, I don't know what's going to happen next week. But can you imagine if you paid $50,000 and you took your friend who proceeded to get so drunk jump in the water and ruin your whole trip. Would you, how freaking pissed would you be? I, it also made me say, you know what? It's so, it's so easy to drink that much on vacation. I mean, they had a bunch of champagne, then she was drinking a bunch of wine, then they had the five course dinner, but how embarrassing and how awful. Um, the only other thing I was going to say about 90 Day Fiance, a lot of you guys are asking me to can get watching it this season. I just started. And what I want to say to these girls, if you are coming from Ukraine or Russia, um, please, if you are going to come over to America to get married to a dude, please focus on the city in which he lives in. Folk, go for a guy that's either in L.A., New York, Miami, or San Francisco. You are not going to be happy when you go, like the bayou is not so, you know, Miami Beach. Okay. It's not. You're going to be really disappointed and it's not going to be fun. And it's not going to be fun if you have to go on a farm and tend to a bunch of cows. If you were living in Russia and you were imagining a life like living in a penthouse in New York City, you're not going to get it there. So that's what's kind of interesting about this season of 90 Day. Well, guys, oh, I want to show you one other thing. I have the photo here on Instagram Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. I found the photo that is exactly like the Givenchy sweatsuit that the boy, the fashion designer, who just bought some black sweats and put, like, tape with his name written on it. Um, this is, a, it's exactly the same. So we'll see what happens with him. I heard this, I heard that show is definitely coming back, Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. And do I watch it? Yes. Do I hate it? Yes, I do. I hate watch a lot of things that, um, that by watching it, I keep people employed. Everybody, you guys, new Juicy Scoop tomorrow Friday with lots of personal information that I'm going to talk to you about, about my vacation that I couldn't get out this week and uh, some other juice I have about some 
some very good. I'm just thinking it's uh, some housewives juice, personal stuff. Anyway, that's going to be on Friday's Patreon. I've got the Juicy Crimes with Shannon on Saturday. Oh, and also part two of that classic episode um, that I shared last week. That's part two will be up. So three different episodes you're going to get, depending on what tier you're on this weekend of Patreon. You go to heathermcdonald.net, click on Patreon, join, and have a wonderful weekend. Bye.